So now in this video, we're going to wire a 555 timer right there in a stable mode. This is an NE555, one of the uh, typical 555s you come across. And uh, so in any case, it's going to be a stable mode. The LEDs are going to alternate which one's on and which one's off and the speed of which. So we're going to wire it differently than a normal a stable mode 555 timer. We're going to use the output as the voltage source for setting the uh, timing and so we'll have a fixed resistor that's just to make sure there's a minimum amount of resistance of at least 220 ohms because a light dependent resistor if there's no light on it it gets to hundreds of millions of ohms of resistance if it's bright enough it gets close to zero ohms of resistance and uh, so that will make sure we have a minimum amount of resistance so that will charge the uh, capacitor and uh, also discharge it but uh, pin 6 is waiting for two thirds of the supply voltage, pin 2 for one third, and it keeps changing the output and will change whether the capacitor is charging or discharging. Uh, basic A stable multi vibrator stuff. So now I already have some uh, jumpers uh, wired up. We have the uh, positive supply, that is pin number 8 right there. Pin number 4 is the reset pin, it's waiting for uh, less than I think half of the supply voltage, but close to uh, the negative rail in any case. Putting directly to the positive uh, supply prevents it from doing anything. And uh, then we have the other side of the uh, power, which is pin number one. And uh, so pin number one and uh, pin number eight set the one third and two third supply voltage. That's why I'm using six volts. So when we look at voltages, uh, one third will be two volts and then uh, two thirds will be uh, four volts. A little easier to see uh, the voltage uh, difference than if we use five volts trying to get one third and two thirds and then we have this little jumper here that goes from a two to six they monitor the voltage the same voltage for an a stable multi vibrator so you just wire them directly together so now we come to the resistor part of the timing and so it's going to be powered from the output which sometimes goes relatively close to the supply rail and sometimes it goes pretty much directly to the negative rail it keeps flipping and that will change uh, the direction that current is actually flowing through here. But in case, we're going to take 220 ohms and go to a pin 3, the output. And uh, I'm going to put that, uh, actually I want to use that resistor. It's spaced a little bit better. And we'll go right up there just to uh, get it out of the way. And grab the light dependent resistor, put it in series. So their resistances will add up. And they really don't want to go into the uh, slots today. But in uh, any case, there we go. We got that. That's not too bad. So the resistances will add up based on how much light is going across them. So now we have the uh, capacitor, the other part of the timing. And uh, for the most part, this is it for the uh, bare minimum of the circuit. So uh, 1,000 microfarad right there. As you can see there, basically the same as the millifarad. And this is a pretty good size capacitor for timing videos where you're flashing LEDs. And if you use smaller value capacitors, you'd have to use higher value resistors to see the uh, flashing LEDs. But in any case, there we go. Make sure the negative side of it, it's polarized, goes to the negative rail. And then we put the uh, positive side of it to that node right there where everything connects right there. So now, even though... Uh, for the A-stable part, we're done wiring. The LEDs are nice. They make it uh, so that you can see what's going on. So I'm not going to put it, they're going to go to the output right there, pin 3 on one side. One's going to go towards the positive supply, the other to the uh, negative supply. And uh, just remember this is pin number 3 right there. So we can zoom in and get a better look. And uh, so I'm actually going to swap the location of the LEDs and their protective resistor, but polarity still matters. The long lead, the anode has to head towards the positive supply, short lead, the cathode, towards the output. So I'm putting the long lead, the anode, right there. And then with the uh, other LED, again, I'm gonna put it where I have the resistor in this schematic, but the uh, main thing is the short lead, the cathode, heads towards uh, ground, long lead, the anode, towards the output. So putting the short lead, the cathode, to that gray jumper right there. And then we're just going to quickly put the uh, resistors where the LEDs are, their location on there. So I do have the power off right there and uh, protective resistor. And this is in a lot of circuits, so I'm not going to dwell on this too much. 
But uh, there you go. So let's do a quick test run right now. Make sure we wired up everything uh, decently. So we got six volts there, a maximum of 40 uh, milliamps of current, which I don't uh, need that much. And so it's going really slow now because it's uh, dark enough. If I get a bright light on there, now you can see it is flashing pretty quickly right there. So now this video was really just about the build, but I'm going to point out uh, one thing that we're probably going to look at in the next video. I turned the lamp on brighter, by the way, and uh, so it's going faster than it was before without the flashlight. The green LED is not lit as long as the red LED. You can probably tell that just by uh, watching the timing. And so that's because the uh, capacitor needs to charge to two-thirds supply voltage. We got six and then to discharge to one third of the supply voltage. So charge up to four volts, discharge down to two volts. When it is charging, that's when the output is high. It's charging that uh, through that resistor, that resistor, and uh, into the capacitor. It's also lighting up this LED right there. So you know it's charging when the red LED is lit. It's not getting all the way to six volts right there. It's probably getting uh, maybe four and a half, maybe five, something like that. And uh, so it's uh, not passing as much current to uh, charge it. When it starts discharging, then the uh, output does connect directly to the negative rail. That's when the green LED lights up, current goes through the LED, the resistor, and then to uh, ground. So it does connect pretty good, uh, pretty closely directly to ground. And so it discharges the capacitor faster. It's also going, actually I went the wrong way discharging the capacitor faster and then going to ground and so the charging takes a little bit longer than the discharging and we're probably going to fix that in the next video but in any case thought I would point that out hope you enjoyed the video make sure you click like subscribe the bell and all that check out uh, all the descriptions down below all the links that I got I got a patreon link if you donate to patreon that would help out a ton I will see you in the next video